What's up, you guys? Sean Rossap. Welcome to Fightful. It is April 15th, 2024. We're here for your WWE Monday Night Raw post-show review. Had a lot of stuff that happened on this show between uh, Intercontinental title match, uh, tag team title news, women's title news. We had a heads up on all this stuff that was going to happen at FightfulSelect.com. That's the most direct way to support us. Just $5 a month gets you all the best exclusive wrestling news. You get it sent directly to your phone or your tablet. Uh, you also get access to our Discord, plus thousands of podcasts in our archives. I'll brag about that a little bit later. We've got Denise Salcedo with us. I just did a video with her talking about our favorite matches from each of uh, the 40 WrestleManias that you can check out on her channel. Denise, how you doing? I'm doing good. And yes, please check out that video. That was so much fun to do. And it made me want to do more videos in that format because like you and I didn't know what each other's answers were going to be. So that ended up working out pretty, pretty nicely. So yeah, that's on the channel. Sean and I picking all of our favorite WrestleMania matches. There, there were some that I was actually surprised I picked myself because yeah, th there were just some that I was like, I didn't realize that I enjoyed that person's work that much. But yeah, hey guys, I know, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> oh yeah. Leave a thumbs up on this video. Uh, leave a, a comment on this video. If you're watching after the fact, I want to engage with you guys even more. A reminder, I am engaging with our Fightful Select subscribers over on Discord all the time. We have an Ask SRS thing over there and I'm there chatting about each one of these shows. But if you want to chat right now, uh, at, you know, hang out in our live chat with our great moderator, Luis. You can send a super chat or a humper chat like these wonderful people are doing. Uh, we largely thrive on donations and your support uh, with the exception of a couple sponsors and our subscribers. So if you want your question or statement read on the air uh, and get some insight behind it, as we often do with some of these stories, uh, donate a super chat here at youtube.com slash Fightful. Or if you're on X or Twitter or uh, Twitch or whatever you want to call it, uh, humperchats.com, that's H-U-M-P-E-R, chats.com now we do have a free tier of fightful select i promise i'm going to stop shilling it in a minute but that is important because there was some unfortunate news that dropped today pw insider had broken the news that rhea ripley had sustained an injury fightfulselect.com if if there's anything like usually like an injury breaking news thing usually we're going to break that on the free tier because it feels kind of gross to monetize that we had an update on Rhea Ripley, and it did appear that she was going to need to vacate her championship, which did happen. Uh, I'm told that it happened in the backstage segment last week where Rhea went up against the wall, uh, sustained either shoulder, collarbone injury, something like that. And by Wednesday, they were discussing internally that they were going to need to uh, vacate the title. That sucks. Uh, Denise, upon hearing the news, even before the the opening segment of tonight's show what was going through your mind because i mean just today was the history making day she tied bailey 380 days with this championship honestly i was bummed because nothing sucks worse than having to see a champion vacate the title and part of going into wrestlemania and this match with her and becky lynch when you and I were talking about this feud, when you and I were talking about predictions, we were all saying how Rhea was the one to win. Why? Because Becky Lynch didn't need to win. This was Rhea because we knew that we wanted to see more of her defending the championship. We wanted to see more of her uh, having these matches. One of the criticisms of Rhea's reign has been that she didn't have enough matches. And that's because people wanted to see more. And so... I felt like, okay, coming off of this victory with Becky Lynch, this really big win, possibly the biggest win of her career, and we're just going to go ahead and see all of these matches, right? And so hearing that she was potentially injured and potentially going to have to be vacating the title, I just thought like, oh, like, please tell me this is incorrect. And even though I knew this was all correct, I was hoping that it was incorrect. And I was hoping for them to say she would be out for like a little bit, but wasn't going to be vacating the title. But the vacating of the title is what I think hurt worse because I actually wouldn't mind it. And I know it's kind of sort of not something that a lot of people would want, but I wouldn't mind it if like, depending on how long she was out, if she just kept the title. And yeah. 
you know, the unfortunate reality with shoulder injuries are they're very rarely short term. Uh, and if they are, I feel like they would have went with that. I do feel like there were maybe, maybe it's just me thinking that, but it felt like there were some periods of inactivity last year. I mean, they went like a month without EO defending it. And again, that's not an indictment on EO. It's an indictment on their booking, but I'm, I feel like that with this new era, we are in a more active title defense era as well. But also this is one of those special circumstances where I think that you could si sort of get around that. Uh, Dream Ninja says that Rhea's return pop is going to be insane. It is. And it does seem very much like she's going away for a while because she had this segment and um, she said that she did not want to vacate her championship, but was going to have to. And then she pointed at Liv Morgan and RJA says people are blaming Liv now for the injury. I can tell you people internally aren't. I haven't heard that Rhea was internally either. Um, in fact, uh, it, it was... You know, nothing like that based on the people that I was I was talking to uh, for our Fightful Select story. There wasn't a whole lot to, to the promo. It's just, you know, unfortunate news. But then I thought they made Liv look great. They made Liv kind of, they made Liv heal up. Like she was not aggressively coming out. She was like almost in this like delusion, this proud delusion that she had. She was just strolling out there and all the security guards were just, watching her laugh and cackle at Rhea and then they had to hold Rhea back. That's going to be hot when it, when they come back, if they continue to protect Liv Morgan, do you think they will? So I hope that they do. And I hope that this lands well, because one of the things with Liv Morgan is the times that she has gotten over, she's gotten over more so as a baby face, right? Where it's people like really pushing for her and cheerleading on her behalf, hoping that, you know, that they do something with Liv Morgan. And this is a different situation now. We are in a situation where Liv Morgan is being booed. Like it kind of blew my mind. Like even though I knew that what was going to happen, that was, was what was going to happen. I still kind of felt like, oh my God, like I, I'm not used to seeing Liv Morgan get booed, right? And I almost feel like part of the reason why she's here in the first place, like why they keep trying to push her and trying to do more is because there are so many fans rallying behind Liv Morgan. So all of a sudden we're in a situation where she's out there and she's getting booed and she's taking the role of a heel. Uh, and so whenever Rhea Ripley does come back, I definitely see this as a baby face uh, come back for Rhea Ripley versus her being the heel that she was prior. And so it is going to be weird to see those dynamics change. And there's already so much history with Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. And I hate this because like, even though this is a real injury, I almost hate that it ended up working out very nicely in a storyline sense sure. of a way where even Liv Morgan said it for herself. She's like, it's eye for an eye. This is karma shoulder for a shoulder. The thing that I'm sort of wondering too is she had only said she was going to be out for a couple of months. Now, I don't know what a couple of months is. Is that three to four? Is that six to nine? Is I, I want to get, like, I wanna get the, the direct quote from that because I feel like she said a few months. And she said a, a few months, of, yes. But she didn't. Yeah, that's and, what I'm saying. Like, what is a few months? Because everyone's going to have a different version of what they think a few months is. Dream Ninja says, give in to the hate, live, embrace the dark side. And Chris says, I don't see Liv as a top star. I, I will say this. I have always liked Liv Morgan, Morgan's work, but the the sort of approach that I saw her take tonight was on a different level than what I had seen before. And I was very, very interested in that. Do you Chris think you take a page out of Drew McIntyre's book where she kind of channels a little bit of what he did while CM Punk was out? A little bit, yeah, because, I mean, if you can get over on Rhea in any capacity, I think that's beneficial because Rhea is one of the most over talent in the world, and that's sort of a, a way since she, uh, she can. And Chris says Raw needs Becky back now. Well, uh, we definitely did not report that Becky was taking time off. The only thing we reported last week was that uh, she was off the show because she had been sick all weekend, and they were like, okay, you got past Mania. You don't need to be here. Uh, she, I mean, she once told me, when I, I said, hey, you taking time off? She goes, no, I work until my body breaks apart like a proper worker. And I said, okay. All right, then. Or or I guess until her contract is up at this point. BB says, been a while since I've caught you both live. I was hoping for a Seth situation. Hope Rhea gets well soon. Yeah. Uh, likewise, I was hoping that there would be some sort of way. And, and quote, the Raven kind of brings that up. She, he says, Here's my gripe. Why didn't Rhea just say Roman can defend the belt whenever, but I get injured and I have to relinquish the belt. 
F you, I'm keeping it. I do feel like they should have had to like almost force her to do that. Like, I, I feel like judgment day should have almost been the voice of reason and be like, listen, we know you want to, but if you do irreparable damage to yourself, that's not beneficial for us as a group either. And man, for this heel group, it was very sad to watch them. Uh, yes. Bit you know her this ado. felt like this. You know what this felt like? Oh, oh, no, oh never mind. You you said it differently. <laughs> never mind. I was gonna say something totally different because you ahead. said like, oh, you were sad that this heel group like all had to say goodbye, and I agree with that. However, in some later segments, though, I was like, Rhea Ripley is the bacon to this club sandwich. Like without Rhea Ripley, it's just a sandwich. It's good. Yeah. I'm going to eat it. But Rhea is the thing that's going to make or break this whole freaking group. And so I'm sort of worried that I'm not going to be like anywhere near as interested as I was. In, uh, and I wasn't even that interested anymore in like the last couple of months in the judgment day. But now I feel like it's going to really, really be a, a, a test to sort of see how they function without Rhea Ripley, if they're able to get as over without Rhea Ripley, which I'm sure they will, but it just it just hits different, you know, without her. And I'm just going to say this right now, Sean, I don't love the way that we're already going to crown a new champion next week. So I, I want to approach that because uh, insert clever Tegan Knox puns is do you think they use Queen of the Ring to crown a new champion? I think they should maybe should have. But I mean, this ha this also happened last year, so I get it. Because last year they were bringing back King, Queen of the Ring, and then they're like, well, we got to crown a new champ, so we'll just do it for that. So I kind of, I'm kind of glad, first off, that we're not going six weeks without that, unless it was a six week tournament leading all the way up to Queen of the Ring, then I'd be okay with it. But as you mentioned, Denise, next week we're getting a, a new world champion. And they didn't give us any details, right? Like, they didn't say, like, there's going to be a match, who was going to be in it. Like, we don't know any details, just that there's going to be a new champion next week. And I don't know how to say this, but, like, no one right now feels deserving of being the champion. And that's where a little bit of my issue comes with, like, we're going at this way too quick. Like, I would have really liked to see some sort of tournament uh, I don't know how even a gauntlet, anything that would have put some people showing a lot of effort because I'm looking at this and I know there are people pitching a lot of names and I'm like, yeah, sure, that's fine. But you got to understand, like you're following Rhea Ripley right now. Rhea Ripley is not just a superstar on, on the roster. Like she's one of the top stars. And like in order to make up for that, like you got to come in and bring, you got to bring your A++ game or have had been bringing your A++ game. That's why when someone said, oh, I Beck I wish Becky was here because Becky is one of the few people that I can see right now being champion and being like, okay, yeah, I'm totally cool with that. No problem. But anybody else kind of feels like, oh, well, you know, I kind of want to see a couple more months or a couple more, not months, excuse me, a couple more weeks of them actually having matches and going out there and wrestling and, and, and anything. Like, it just feels too soon. Alyssa, who follows all the worst people on Twitter, says Rhea with a heartbreak. <laughs> and uh, RJ says a heel live could create a better face live later on. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the best baby face turns emerge from a lot of the heels seeing the air, uh, air of their ways, so to speak. Uh, Matthew England says, just want to send some love for Denise. Ignore the hate. I don't know. We, we have really sexualized this podcast, guys. <laughs> what? between my my garfield tennis shirt I, listen, don't worry the next just, show sean i'm gonna come completely covered up by the way i'm gonna be like just covered so no one sees that. any of my femininity denise whatsoever. stop it we're gonna get accused of whoring out for super chats if you don't <laughs> stop talking like no, that. that's why i said i'm gonna cover myself up ridiculous ridiculous probably just some new thing that the kids are into these days Vic <laughs> says give us unhinged heel champion Liv versus white hot baby face Rhea I think that's the direction that they're going I it's just man I hope that I hope that Rhea can come back soon but also very very safely and Vic says while you never want to see somebody get hurt the symmetry is perfect for Liv and Rhea's story I, I agree um I I do think that Liv needed to be a heel in this anyway because it created some edge for her or otherwise I felt like she was at risk of just being Rhea's next victim and I don't think that her 
very passionate fan base would have been okay with that. Now, also, I'm pretty sure her very passionate fan base are not great with the fact that Rhea is hurt either. It's 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 a catch twenty two, but it's one that I think that Liv can can benefit from. And Taryn says Liv wins the title, turns heel, gets a bodyguard, maybe an eventual Raquel return. I would like that. Raquel's got to, you know, she's she's got to focus on just getting better herself, though. Uh, sending our best wishes to her. Yeah, Jordan's. I don't know. Ahead, has sorry. there been any updates on Raquel, by the way? Because I know she's dealing with something that's like, it was, just, yeah, it's, it's, thing, it's like it the flares. Mass cell, it yeah, goes. yeah. It happened lot. right after Elimination Chamber as well. Very complicated. Jordan says if they really want to make Liv a hater, have Raquel win the title and have take have her take out like a legend killer vibe. Well, I mean Raquel, I don't think is cleared right now. Jonna says Liv winning the title makes the most storyline sense with me, to me with Liv or Nia being a runner up. Liv can be a top star with the right booking and this is the right way. I would probably have Liv win the title against uh Nia. And you know now that I think about it, I do I do kind of sort of understand why they're doing it next week because they got a draft coming up and uh they probably got to get it done before that but mm. I mean, not really. If you think about it, there's a way to go yeah. about it where they could just be like, okay, once we have our draft, once we have our new our new people on this roster, then we can go from there and determine who will be champion. Right for now, this sure. championship's gonna stay on this brand. I don't feel like they have to have to do it right before the draft. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they've they've sort of been in that position before. I mean, that could that could lead to some great creativity where a lot of people that are on both sides of, of the roster are involved in a tournament or something like that. And it could lead to something interesting. Uh, Joe says, hear me out. Liv versus Nia next week for the title ends in a DQ via a Becky Lynch in a hood with a new look and a triple threat at backlash. I, I would like it if there was a triple threat at backlash or some I, sort of, some sort of winner, the winner being crowned instead at backlash instead of raw next week. I like that idea an awful lot, actually. I mean, those are three of the most utilized singles characters within the context of this program. So, yeah, Matt Hennessy says the Rhea injury sucks, but the silver lining is the heat that Liv gets with it. Chad heel turn was great. I think DIY beats Awesome Truth next week. Well, we're about to talk about that as well. A reminder, get your Super Chats and Humper Chats in. I love how much you guys were wanting to talk about not just the unfortunate Rhea injury, but the Liv booking out of that as well ke775 says any guesses on talent going from nxt to main roster and vice versa intrigued at how many talents head to nxt for a fresh start so myself and Corey brennan reported on fightfulselect.com the final testament ivar people like that popping up on that show is is more of a preview than than anything else but carmelo hayes has been discussed elia has been discussed uh tony d'angelo's family has been discussed as well there's there's several of them. Um, hey, Sean, I are, we have, gonna, are we gonna make up for our terrible mock draft that we did last year? Oh God, are we gonna make up that. for it this year? I forgot about that. I haven't prepared for that whatsoever. Um, Me either. Which didn't it didn't feel like we did last year either. <laughs> but um, I'll, because like once we get the rules, maybe maybe I will. I'd be interested because I love doing that. I lo I love draft stuff. I'm going to a damn Bengals draft party next week. And then I'm going to hang around in Cincy the next day because I think WWE's in town the next day. I'm going to see what I can get, see what kind of interviews and stuff I can land. But Nicholas says, I assume the crowning is next week to have a champion before the draft. At that moment, who do you think wins next week? If it is actually next week, I think it's Liv. Otherwise, I think it's Backlash and then Liv because I would love Becky to very much make it about her again, which is what Liv hates. Oh, and then Liv ends up winning. I have a feeling they're going to, I feel like because Liv Morgan is the obvious option right now, I have a feeling that they're going to be like, oh no, let's go with Nia Jax. Yeah. Rassel Stat know. says, with the talk of the draft coming up, what's the latest of 2021 raw draft pick Gable Stevenson? Was it 2021? <laughs> no. Did he get drafted in There's 2021? There's no way. Was it really 2021? No, it wasn't that long ago, no, was it? No, it had to have. Yes, no, I think he's right. Yes, because now that I think about it, this oh is not the first time we've made this joke. God, you're right. It was 2021. Yeah. Insane. Was, I mean, they did that. that got drafted that we never saw. 
or was it they just did him? That last year? I, Denise, I have had a story sitting on the back end of Fightful Select forever about like how there have never been main roster plans for Von Wagner, even though he was in that draft. Like it was, was he drafted? So weird. He was in the pool. He was in the draft pool. He and Zion Quinn. So the was only he thing a free ever, agent? Yeah. Y- technically, Von Wagner's a free agent. Yeah. I forgot about that. Zion Quinn, too. Yeah. No. Case. Wait, Zion Quinn did show up one time and had a squash match, I think, on one of the shows. Yeah, Braun Breaker. Yeah. Okay, see? K- <laughs> K- K775 says, is Triple H handling contract negotiations for Drew, Becky, and Seth since they fired the talent relations guy last week? Listen, we're going to have a lot on that. We also reported on FightfulSelect.com. Natalia is up in like a month. Drew is up in like a month. We reported that today. They were not happy with how long a lot of these people were being waited on uh, before contract negotiations. And um, <sighs> people want to feel wanted, man. People want. And, and listen, if you want to feel like wanting something and you're tired of waiting, you know, Fightful and Blue Chew have been at it a long time. Maybe you've been at it a long time. Maybe you're lacking that motivation. Maybe you're lacking that confidence. You don't think you have what you once had. Blue Chew is here to get you there. BlueChew.com and the code Fightful. You'll get your first shipment free of what? Well, it's a chewable tablet that has the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. So it gets your performance ready to go. It's prescribed online. It ships straight to your door. You do an online consultation. And if approved, you'll be back to that main event level performance. Sometimes it's not even about performance. It's about that confidence. And Blue Chew is going to make sure that you have that. Blue Chew and the code Fightful. Your first shipment free. You just pay $5 shipping. What is there to lose? BlueChew.com and the code Fightful. DNC Digital says, hey guys, had a question. Does the original WWF Tag Team Championship lineage still exist? I think it may have reached the tag tie or the raw titles. But no, it doesn't. It it doesn't. Um, And that sucks that really really sucks like I'll, I'll go back and even find what it was oh my god like the the raw tag team titles were the the actual gosh they were the wwe tag team championship from 2002 to 2016 um my god they just completely screwed it up i hope that a part of the new era is them streamlining this because as i'm about to mention they said, oh, the only title that Sheamus hasn't won is the IC title. And I'm like, nah, bro, y'all started a new world heavyweight title last year that don't have anything to do with the one that he won. Just roll it up into to one neat, tidy thing. And let that be that. Jonathan Corona says, Sean, do you like the production, new production in WDB? I love it. I, I'm going to talk about it later. I love it. Says, who do you think uh, will get their theme back now that we got Sheamus getting his? Uh, so, yes, yeah, Seamus did get his theme back. He showed up. It's been a long time. It's been like eight months since he's he's wrestled. He beat Ivar. And, again, not, not his most inspired performance for sure. But you know what? He ain't wrestled in eight months. Man's 46 years old. I'm ready, I'm ready to see him get his reps underneath him and then start beating the living shit out of people. But still, dude was doing white noises off the middle rope, so can't complain too much. Too many limes is back. He tweeted about that. Denise, what did you think of this? And who what do you see? Tweet? Too many limes over and over again. The theme song. Too many oh, limes. Okay. Yeah, over and over. Okay. What did you think of this? And who do you want to see get their theme back? Um, I don't know if there's anybody that would want to see. Who doesn't have their of course, theme back? AJ, first off. AJ immediately oh, give, give yeah, his the theme new back. Theme. Oh, but I hated his old theme too. So I would just scrap it and do a whole new theme for him. You know, I, you know oh, that. I was leave. never a fan of that song. The, you, what is it? You don't want none. <laughs> I hate that song. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've hated it for like the longest. Muted. How dare you? How dare you? Listen, Denise. I know there's a lot of old, middle-aged white guys that come after you on a daily basis, <laughs> but AJ Styles don't have shit to do with that, okay? So you leave his name out of your mouth. <laughs> don't you dare ever say anything like that Fair. again. Fair. Because it will not end well for but you. That song okay? sucks, Sean. It's not a good song. I liked all his like, you de- TNA you songs way all better. You deserve hate that you get. You, you deserve it all. This you, You've had it coming. Now I understand. I just haven't been paying attention. Yeah, you have it. You know, I'm sorry. Look, the song is not good. I'm sorry. It's I've never been a fan of it. 
I want a whole new song. Yeah. I don't hate Christmas anymore, by the way. You're getting canceled. <laughs> anyway, um, Seamus is back. I'm glad to see Seamus back. You, you know, I, I feel like given his style, he'll be back at like full strength very, very soon. There's got to be someone else whose song I want back. It's going to bother me like the whole time. My people are livid, Denise. What? Hmm. I'm my apologies. I was never a fan of the song. I feel like eventually I'll get nostalgic for Naomi's theme, but I kind of like her new. Thing. Oh, the, the OG rebel heart with Johnny Gargano. That's the one I went back. Yes. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good. See, I like that one. It reminds <laughs> me of hot topic. Broken dreams for drew. That's definitely one. I went back. Uh, rock hard. Joel Wood says any news on NXT battleground got the combo for NXT and raw, but I've only seen local ads in Savannah for raw. The live events page still lists Battleground for Savannah in May. I do I don't think it'll be at the apex as suggested. That it's very I don't know why that went out there. I don't know why that would make any sense. I don't know why they wouldn't just do the show at the performance center if they were gonna do it at the UFC Apex, like some people had suggested. Team Henderson, thank you so much for the super chat. Chances Tony can get Drew, Becky, Seth. Um, this much I tell you. If Tony Khan gets the opportunity to bid on any of those people, he will outbid WWE. That's, that's, I mean, that's just what will happen. He and will. You can't blame the talent for seriously considering where if you have the option to go to AEW and get paid even more, for like you can't schedule, blame sure. them. You can't blame them for that. Like this is life changing money for some of these, like for a lot of people, life changing money. I know these. a lot of these wrestlers are already millionaires, but add more millions on top of that. Now you got people saying they ain't signing, though. Uh, you know, I, I remember an awful lot of people that did sign that people said wouldn't sign. And everybody said that Cody wouldn't leave AEW and go to WWE. You, you don't know their priorities and motivations. You don't know, period. Well, remember John Moxley? I remember his story was interesting because he got an offer from WWE and he didn't even bother to like open it and look at it. I remember he said that. Yeah. And it, like you said, you don't know people's motivations. Like me, I would have opened that damn envelope. I want to know what was in there. <laughs> but again, people have different motivations. Niner Mike claims it was written. Oh, for James Storm. Uh, maybe. By um, the way, you didn't read the previous Super Chat. Because it's a lie. It's a that lie. Person, that person paid their money, says they agree with me. Therefore, they deserve to get their super chat read, Sean. That person's a whore, Denise. Anyway, <laughs> Eddie Melinda. <laughs> You're an expert since you clearly work with one. <laughs> Will says Drew's been trying to get his theme back for three years. RJ says, I wonder if Liv will steal Dom from Rhea next. I would actually love you know, to see Liv trying to By the way, you know like I got an email saying that? So someone emailed me, and I was almost going to steal it and use it as my new Hollywood because someone emailed me calling me an on-air whore. And oh I was boy. like, oh, if I could run with that. Denise on-air whore, whore Salcedo. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. Anyway. So hard. Anyway, this is Eddie my Malin. inbox, guys. Welcome. Well, speaking of, we did get a super chat here that I'll read. Since since we're in the context of this, Wheelman says, "Oh, if it isn't the big bad SRS from the Cincinnati bar scene, I've heard so much about on Twitter." J.K. Love you guys at Fightful. Best five dollars in the business. So somebody brought a tweet to my attention from a like a zero follower account that said. Yeah, SRS has a reputation in the Cincinnati bar scene for being rude to patrons and women. I'm like, so some people online like know about me, but like interpersonally, like all my IRL friends, when they hear SRS is a drunk or on coke, they're like, this guy can't take ibuprofen without getting a hangover. I've never drank in my life. I, I do know. not go to, I go to karaoke bars with my friends. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I am not a bar scene guy. So that guy was, I was like, you know, this, uh, show me, show me what you mean. Show me this evidence, please. This would, I like to think that he's just like taking pictures of random bearded white guys in Bengals hoodies after Bengals games, which I'm going to give you a little secret. 
there's 60,000 of them in Cincinnati after every Bengals game. But uh, that was a, that was a weird one. That's got to be one of the weirdest ones for sure. Wow. Eddie Melendez says, Drew, Broken Dreams, AJ Styles, TNA song, CM Punk, the original Living Color. I feel like the Living Color version, they, they did that one because uh, I think that Living Color gets to keep a little bit more of a cut of it because it's the remastered version. We got Finn Young saying, did Dan Ventrell handle talent acquisition as well? Uh, the negotiations, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Team Henderson says, do you want AJ to come out to Taylor Swift? I bet she would love that. Hell yeah, I would. You kidding me? But she I mean, listen. Pretty penny though. I would too. I would love that as well. I think it would be great for wrestling if that happened. It'd be a hit. Parker Hines says, SRS, your reaction to UFC 300. What a card. Oh my God. That was, I mean, listen, I know that the next two months of Apex cards are going to suck as a result, but every fight on that show had somebody I cared about. It was an incredible card. It lived up to the hype. It was well worth it, and it was um, well worth the money that I didn't have to spend thanks to... I've often talked about uh, how much of a pay-per-view buyer I am. Take that any way you want it, but I'll tell you how I take it. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Fastest VPN on the planet, global server network, all that good stuff. That's great, but a big big reason why I got NordVPN.com slash Fightful is all the pay-per-views I buy, all the money we're spending. We're trying to control costs as a company, as a household. You can get those UFC pay-per-views at a fraction of the price you're paying here in America. Plus, you can get all kinds of great content that you wouldn't normally see thanks to those services as well. Shows that are on overseas services, things that you want to watch a little bit early so you get on that UK time and watch them. Being able to change the interfaces of things like the WWE Network, maybe you don't like Peacock, anything like that. NordVPN.com slash Fightful gives you that ability while having the fastest VPN on the planet. Also, you just get so much more out of your internet experience with NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Subscribe to, to Fight and AEW Plus. Watch AEW without commercials. Uh, watch Bare Knuckle Boxing. Watch UFC pay-per-views, boxing pay-per-views at the rates they're getting over in the UK. Change your virtual location with just one click. And hey, if you need any help using it, they got that 24-7 tech support. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. I feel like what? I need to defend myself, Sean, because on that AJ Styles thing, I was thinking about it. And the reason why I never liked it was because I never thought it lived up to the TNA song that he had when he, the one that one. goes, um, get ready to fly. And then the one goes, I am, I am, you are, you are, I am, I am. That one was way better. Did you ever see where Xavier Woods played that on trombone no. while, while Oh, yeah, AJ? wait, no, no, wait. I did see that. I did it's see that. Stuff. Yeah. You see, that's why. So to me, like this one never lived up to that. So it was just like a not so great version. I'm sorry. That's why. Uh, also, UFC 300 was incredible. I hit on my, uh, let's see, what was it? Moicano and uh, Holloway bets as underdogs as well. Incredible show. We talked about it in the Fightful Select Discord as well. Uh, we're talking sports. We're talking wrestling, everything over in that Discord. So please subscribe. DNC Digital says, may not drink. You definitely own a white shirt. There was somebody that was also like, SRS is short as hell. I saw him at Revolution in a white shirt. I've never like, seen you wear like a white shirt, just like a white plain t-shirt. I can't remember what I wore at Revolution. No, you always wear like um, plaid. You wear your little button-ups and your like your little outfit, the little blue, the little blue squared one. Yeah, I can't remember what I wore at Revolution. You I, don't I wear have... plain white t-shirts, though. I know that. Or you no, wear Doja I... Cat shirts. Yeah, I do like wearing You're Doja either wearing shirts. Doja Cat shirts, some shirt with some like big graphic, or your shirt with the button up with the little squares. I'm or like your trying suit. to... I'm really I know trying all your to outfit, Sean. No, I, I wore... It was, it was a blue and white striped button up shirt. That, I told that, you. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. blue and white button up striped shirt. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Uh, Michael Warren says T totaler SRS and O A W Salcedo Cadillac Carson says, but also forget those online haters. Denise, you do excellent work. Keep it up. You too, SRS. Keep it up. Thank you. Are you going to uh, St. Louis for dynasty? Yes. I'm flying okay. in and out the same day and I've never wow. been to St. St. Louis. So I don't even know what to expect. I don't even you know. Didn't how go for, anything. You didn't go for the rumble. No, 
I don't know what wow. I was doing, but I wasn't there. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I'll be wrestling in Jeffersonville, Indiana that afternoon. If anybody is there or nearby, uh, donate uh, to the Humane Society of Washington County. I am participating in the Paul Cade Rumble on Sunday. Rob Wilkins says, last year's draft. That one's on me. <laughs> Poor Rob. <laughs> a stag says denise that's garfield not doja cat oh you do wear garfield shirts too by the way garfield shirts i've oh, got by the way you're gonna be very proud of me i finally have a doja cat song that i like which one the paint to town red song she a devil she that's a bad good. little bitch she a rebel that's good you're about eight months behind on that but hey we'll, well take it. i like that song i just started hearing it it came up on my spotify playlist it's the only I'll, doja I'll... cat song i know I'll send you some stuff. Will Chisholm says, outside Julia, do you see WWE working with Rossi's new company, Marigold, like talent swaps? Yes, I do. I've thought this the entire time. I will continue to think this. I definitely think that is going to happen. Uh, Dream Ninja says, live stealing Dom would rule. It's perfect. <laughs> and N. Simmons says, if I had to choose someone, I would personally put it on Tiffany. She's probably the fastest rising star. You can have Liv take the title off of her to get more heat. I think right now uh, they've got their plans for Tiffany, even though I think they should kind of pivot. But um, I, I think that they'll probably, I feel like they'll keep it to to the people that they have on Raw at this very moment until. But Sorry, but there's nothing I want more on in life than to see Liv Morgan steal Dominic. I think that would be, be great. hilarious. If like Dominic goes through the space where he's like confused because he needs a woman, yeah. you know, dominating him. I don't freaking know. Speaking of, let's talk about this match with Andrade. What kind of a, a world are we in where we are talking about Dominic Mysterio doing really good-looking apron Canadian destroyers on WWE Monday Night Raw? Uh, this was, this was, this is again the type of person you want Dominic in the ring with. And to me, this is starting to hint at Dominic not being the charity case, not being that guy. It, like we're starting to see the flashes in the ring of Dominic being competent within a kayfabe perspective beyond him knowing what he's doing psychologically outside of character. We're starting to see them implement that from a character standpoint too, because like Andrade's built pretty well and they they got Dominic doing Canadian destroyers. Andrade winning, I think is the right move. McDonough attacks. Ricochet makes the save. I thought this was fantastic. It was all right. I was. I'm still waiting for that match that I know Andrade can have because I haven't. Se I haven't seen him like. How do I say this? We know what level Andrade can go, and I haven't seen him even come close to that yet since his return in WWE because he can go so much more than what we've seen so far. I mean, I think this was a good indicator, a, a good indicator that it could happen. Uh, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell defeat Maxine and Ivy. The good story here is that Indy helps cheat to beat uh, this team. Uh, wasn't exactly like a, a smooth finish, but it's all about the story. And what I need now, beyond these cold two and a half, three minute matches, are some some substance in the stories. Like show us some skits, show us some backstage stuff, show us that. Because right after this, we also got Chelsea and Piper defeating Caden and Katana, and. I was, I was, I'm so glad that Indy is doing what Candace wants because I'm like, we can't afford to have less teams because it feels like we've seen both of these matches a hundred times already. You literally took the words out of my mouth when you said that they need to do more backstage skits and stuff like that because I'm kind of over these matches already. We've been seeing the same match, I feel, over and over again. And it's kind of getting a little bit, like, exhausting. I feel like they really need to spice it up and make it different. And uh, I, I feel bad, but this just need, they need to spice it up a whole lot with these ones because this one's kind of feeling like I've seen it so many times. I can't even tell you the difference between the last one and the one afterwards anymore. All I know is that, okay, Indy Hartwell's now taking a page out of Candace's book. Good, that's going to add some intrigue, but okay, where do we go from here? I feel like they needed to make some more changes. One of the things that I had mentioned right off the beginning when Candice LeRae started being like a heel, I wish we would have seen a different, like see her change her, her look, her get up, any little thing to just sort of make it feel like fresh and new. And I still would want to see something along those lines. 
Uh, we've got a super chat. Where was it? My God. Catch fan says Caden and Katana need to go to TNA. Triple H never liked this team. They've got zero true program. Same shit during NXT under Triple H's regime. Listen, I know that you are passionate about this team, Catch fan. You've you've tweeted this many times, including before when they won the tag won the before they won the tag titles. However, I don't know if them going somewhere where they're going to make about ten percent as much money as they are right now with a WWE minimum of two hundred and fifty grand. I don't want to see them go to TNA and make a, a significantly less amount of money. I don't want to see that for them at all. Um, I think that they are important to this tag division. It's just, I want WWE to treat that tag division like it's important. Crazy 101, could you ever see AEW WWE working together? Yes, I could. I think it would take a lot, but yes, I could. BL says, question for Denise, who's the favorite in the triple threat match? E.T., Alf, or Marvin the Martian? I love terrestrial e. radio. E. Are you kidding me? E.T.'s the GOAT. No one compares to E.T. Marvin the Martian's way more violent, though. But E.T., he's so, like, cute. Alf, and okay, I listen. never cried so much. I, like, watching E.T. was one of the saddest movies I had ever seen. If this was The Rock, Triple H, and Stone Cold, E.T. is the Triple H of them. Like, Alf is a Bro. better promo. Marvin the Martian's better... Like from a Stop charisma it. and and ET is the saying. one that you do like everything. Like everyone knows ET phone home. Everyone recognizes him. He's the one that's like everywhere. No, ET is the goat, and I will not take any I think, ET slander. I think more people might recognize Marvin the Martian. No, I think it's ET. Maybe. Pat Faruga says, "What's the likelihood we see a world where every company talent swipes with each other by licensing wrestlers out?" Thank you, and much love to both. Uh, I think there's a world where almost every company does that on a major scale, but I don't think that will happen on a grand scale. Rock hard Joel Wood says, what percentage that should not be aggregated do you think Drew, Becky, and Seth stay in WWE? Um, I'll say 70, 80, and 80%, just because you know, anything Who can happen. 70? Drew. Oh. Drew and then the other two 80 just because I think that, you know, being outbid is always an option. The BEP says anything you want to do, bring back anything. Uh, bring back anything you want to do. Becky's second theme. I don't know. Eduardo says really want Randy's burning my light back. He doesn't. He doesn't want it back. Jonathan Corona says small sets are back. Thank God. No more big Tron. Is this what they're doing moving forward? Uh, from what I understand, when tickets dictate it, then yes. Cadillac Carson says he wants Gunther's old theme, Asuka's old theme, Hugger Bailey, and uh, Denise, you're wrong about styles. I wondered if we were going to get Hugger Bailey theme at WrestleMania as like a throwback, but we didn't get that. And I think, I think she's pretty well moved on. Yeah, I think so too. We had the QR code, which leads to... Uh, a link which leads to a graphic. I'm going to put it up here on, on screen shortly whenever it will load up for me. Uh, well, I can't find it anyway. It is about Bo Dallas, AKA uncle howdy. That is a fightful selected reported as much recently. What interest level do you have in this? We, we start to hear I'm that curious. Eric Rowan. Eric I'm Rowan curious is to see uh, how they present it, especially now with Triple H, you know, being in charge and stuff. Like it's that's the the big thing. How are they going to present it? How is it going to be different? How are they going to, you know, obviously honor Bray as well? That's got to be a part of it. So yeah, that's sort of my thoughts on that. And I mean, yeah, Eric Rowan pulling out of some bookings recently due to contractual obligations. Oh, is they, that the there art was a, that they showed? Pardon me. That's the art that they showed in the QR code. Yes. Oh, that's my yes. first time and, seeing it. Okay. And there was a video. It said, trust me, take my hand, time to wake up. I mean, it's, that's what it's about. And um, they there were a, there was a tease at the end of the Bray documentary as well. And he talked about wanting to honor Bray. So I hope, I hope he gets to. I really hope he gets to. And Braun should be back before long. It's been almost a year. Matt Hennessy says... I was thinking the new Wyatt faction should be Braun, Rowan, Bo Dallas, Alexa Bliss, and Broken Matt 
Hardy. Uh, Matt Hardy did post it. I mean, listen, if it was quite literally his family from throughout the years, all of those people would fit in very well. Mayor Pete says, what's your go-to karaoke song? Thoughts on Matt Hardy possibly joining Rotunda? Well, I, I just mentioned that. So um, my go-to karaoke song, I think I sang uh, the Garth Brooks song with John Alba and Connor Casey, and then I sang Doja Cat Moo last week. I'm sure, I only uh, sang karaoke one time, and it was with Jeremy Lambert, and it was Blank I Space. It. I got a video of it. I know, which I have never seen, by the way. I've been waiting to see the video for like how many years now? Drew interview. He kicks the TV. Jonathan Corona says, I know his contract's up in a couple weeks, but I'd love to see him winning the world title, taking it to indie shows, making it a storyline about his contract. I mean, Drew is not afraid to, to navigate the indie scene whatsoever, but I don't think they'll do that. I, I would love to see them do something outside the box like that. Cathartic says, after your report, are you more confident in that Drew is AEW bound? Feel his schedule is going to sway him to jump ship since he wants to be home more. Again, I don't know his priorities. I only know that he was approached last month. And to Jonathan Corona's point, like, he's not afraid to navigate the Indies at all. But to me, their VP of talent approaching Drew in March was really, really uh, dumb. I, there's no other way I can put it. Like, I'm sure that Dan Ventrell is a nice guy. Drew McIntyre was booked to win the world title at WrestleMania and to feud with CM Punk and is on the poster for Clash at the Castle in Scotland and he ain't under contract for it. Woof! All-time goofy decision. Why would you wait until these talent have the most leverage possible? You think they're sweating it out? They are not sweating it out with a perfectly good Tony Khan sitting right over there being like, yeah, let me give you millions of dollars. I got a new TV deal to land. And right oh. now, Drew is like the hottest he's been in a long time. Like, let's just say if I'm Drew, I'm sitting down in my couch nicely with my legs crossed, eating cookies, being happy as hell right now because I can basically go any direction and chances are that I'm going to be the one to benefit from it. Well, of course you'd have your legs crossed. He wears kilts. Uh, in Simmons <laughs> says... Styles theme is a remix of DMX. Well, no, it's inspired by DMX. Uh, but yeah, it is no sunshine. It can never be a bad theme, but still love you, Denise. It's no, I am, I am. Watch, listen to those songs. It's very South good. It's very good. G the guy that did that theme is actually working for AEW now. And Which one, the one, the I am, I am song? Yeah, Dale Oliver. He works for- Oh, he uh, did, and he did that song? Oh, he did so many in, in There's TNA. There's so many TNA songs that I love, yeah. like- that one, the Kurt Angle one, that's my favorite, by that's the way. That's incredible. My most favorite wrestling theme song of all time is the Kurt Angle uh, TNA theme song. Beautiful People had a slapper. Uh, Jeff Jarrett's is really good. I thought yes. Jeff Jarrett's is really incredible. Yes, there's a lot Lots. of gems. There were some gems. I mean, Christian Cage's was so good that AEW was just like, hey, yo, can we use that? I loved but, Christian uh, Cage's theme songs everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. I'm surprised they haven't went with a more like, orchestra inspired version for him now but yeah, yeah. you're right my favorite Punks one though is the one where uh the cl if you close close your eyes something something just close your eyes is really good i That's like one. yes uh, so i actually tried to hit up the woman who sang that the original version not the story of the year version waterproof blonde i think she's like a, a hairstylist like locally to me but um I don't, I don't think she's in the biz anymore but uh we got Man, punks are punks saying Liv wanted to do the crazy lady Harley Quinn thing for years. Her getting to do that without Vince in the way and with heel heat, sign me up. Yeah, now without Vince around to screw up her shit, I think it'll be a lot better. Jam Beard says, don't get to watch the Raw review much anymore, but shout out to Denise for having a... Shout out to Denise for what? Have, I'm not going to I'm not gonna make fun of how anybody looks. We are above that here. Um. But it said, looking for his 15 minutes of fame off her back. Yes. Sean. <laughs> Putting it lightly. Yeah. I have an emergency. What? I need to go run and get my sister. She's across the street waiting for me. Oh, my gosh. Hold Denise on. Give me a second. A Give me a second. I'm just going to walk her because she's too scared. My gosh. Anyway, guys, Denise will be back momentarily. Send in your super chats. Send in your humper chats. 
Aces and Eights TNA song slaps. It is very good. While we wait on Denise, and we won't wait that long, we'll let you hear from our sponsors. Hey guys, I'm here to tell you about betonline.ag, the official betting partner of Fightful. It's not just an online platform. They've been trusted for over 25 years. They boast a focus on the player approach and have built their reputation on offering their clients nothing but the best. From cutting edge technology to enticing promotions and the latest sports betting odds. Whether it be wrestling, MMA, boxing, or football, baseball, basketball, or racing, anything you can think of, all major sporting events are covered by betonline.ag. Fast payouts, highest credit card acceptance industry-wide, safe and secure online environments, and their live betting feature allows you to bet on your favorites weekly and easily and in real time. Betonline.ag. That's where we're going at Fightful. That's where we suggest you go as well. That's where we get all of our odds at. BetOnline.ag. Only bet what you can and please bet responsibly. Denise ain't back yet. Jonathan Corona says, Sean and Denise, if you could choose a WWE theme to work out with, which one would you work out to? Denise, who are your two favorite, or what are your two favorite rides, rides in Universal? I have the Mummy Mario Kart. Okay, so I'll wait for her on that one. Uh, Alistair Black's WWE theme. That's a good one to work out to. However, let's go ahead and jump right into uh, the tag team title situation. Uh, also, yes, uh, Luis is saying EO's theme is a banger too. Hell yeah, it is. Shout out to our moderator, uh, Luis, for helping us out. So new tag team titles. This was a fun segment. I'm interested to learn what you guys think of the new tag team titles. Uh, they they are now the world tag team titles. They are very inspired by, first off, the circular design of the tag team titles as they exist now, which suck. I mean, listen, the silver versions are better than the copper penny versions, but thank God we're getting those the hell out of there. And look at the Velcro. Get, get out of here. At least these are inspired by uh, by the world title. But now that we got Denise back, Denise, what did you think of how the title belts, the new title belts look in general? Because it, there are people that are saying, well, these are starting to get very uniform and very similar along the way. Right. So they're very red. That's for sure. I'm like, oh, they're sticking with the whole red and blue, which obviously Raw, SmackDown, we get it. It's the colors, you're branding them. Cool. I like that these ones have a little bit more of a design in that like uh, outer gold area. I appreciated that because uh, the silver, it just looked like a coin to me. So these at least have a little bit more design and makes them look a little bit more royal, a little bit more like a championship belt. They're they're not a 10 out of 10 for me. I, I don't think they're like gorgeous, but they're so much better than what the last yeah. belts were. James Zimmerman says, I'll talk in hyperbole. That was one of the best episodes ever. I do not think so. I think it was fine, no. but says, aside from our truth and Miz being a little cringe in the middle, five out of five. Well, I'm glad, hey, James, I'm glad you think so. Uh, I loved our truth calling out Triple H for being Tommaso Ciampa. That was very, very funny. <laughs> Meet Normus says, meet here, let's crank. Better finish, MJF Cole or Max Holloway? The Max Holloway finish is one of the craziest things I've seen in MMA, and I've seen some batshit crazy things. Oh, also hoping for a tag title change next week on Raw. Well, we'll be talking about that momentarily. Drodesy says, called it last week with the new tag titles. Long overdue. Now that they split them, it's time. FightfulSelect.com, best $5 in the business or $54 a year. Had it right before the show. Morgan says, I like the new tag titles and I'm expecting the tag titles to debut on SmackDown. What are the odds they emulate the big logo belts or does the blue brand get new belts across the board except for the US title? Um, I think that this one... I think the tag titles will get updated as well. I don't think we need to keep that same outdated shit design on SmackDown after we've changed it here. I would love to see the United States Championship get an upgrade. I don't like the version that they have now, but I guess it's better than the one that they used to have. Uh, yes, boy says, what are your, some of your favorite belt designs? Uh, the the like 07 TNA belt was really, really good. The winged eagle was really good. I like the, the classic. I, I like the NWA US title as well. I like the hardcore belt. I like it too. I thought it was, it was charming. Really cool. Yeah. I don't know what it was. It was edgy and not what you would expect, but I loved it. It was charming. I thought, I thought it was, it was that um, it was charming in its own ugly yeah. way. 
but it was charming. Yes. Also, um, you were asked, what are your two favorite rides at Universal Studios? Oh, at Universal Studios, it's the mummies, the mummy, sorry, the mummy and the Simpsons ride. <laughs> Did you see it? I he freaking the got mummy stuck too. in the Harry Potter ride, bro. I'm never going on the Harry Potter ride ever again. That thing so, freaking stopped while we were on it and the lights turned off and everything. Mm -hmm. The Simpsons ride, which one? The virtual coaster or the virtual coaster? Yeah, the one where okay. we get to put we get put in Maggie's mouth. <laughs> yeah, I love that one too. <laughs> yeah, me uh, too. So I like that one. I went there. It was so funny because I was like, I, I told my wife, I'll take you anywhere in the world you want for, you know, putting up with us launching this website. And she's like, I just want to go to Harry Potter World, bro. And I didn't get it because I'm not a Harry Potter guy at all. But then when I went to the Simpsons land, and I hadn't watched Simpsons religiously in like 15 years then i understood i was like okay now i see it because i identify so much of this with my childhood i was having crusty burgers and drinking buzz cola and all that bullshit i wanted crazy. to get the big donut but the line was so long and oh, it was yeah. raining a little bit i was like i don't want to stand in this rainy ass line but yeah. uh, no and i finally got to do the mario kart world and i'm not a big fan of like any of these things but uh it's it looks so cool and so nice. So I still, I enjoy myself when I go. James Zimmerman says WCW US title is my all time fave. Hit us with some, uh, some of your favorite title belts, guys. I would love to, to hear this. Uh, DIY defeated New Day in Creed. This was fast paced. This was intense. You, you know which one I loved? The Divas Butterfly that? one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, we got a tag team match to talk about and DIY win. Uh, there was one spot I was like, man, listen, I love Julius Creed, but I, man, got to either, either Ciampa's got to take that suplex differently or Julius has got a bridge with it. I don't know what was happening there, but it was scary. And both of them are too good for that to happen. I, I was just like seeing, you know, knowing the history of Tommaso Ciampa, I was like, oh man, I just hope everything was okay. Looked like it, everything good to go. These are pros after all, but there were some spots that I really liked, like the superplex and then how uh, Xavier immediately hit the flying elbow drop on Julius when he landed. These are three teams that naturally go together. Very rarely do we see the babyface, babyface, babyface matchup. And I like that DIY got this opportunity, and I wouldn't hate to see them win the titles next week either, oh, Denise. I want them to win. I'm sorry. Like, Miss Truth is fun, but I can't really take them seriously as an actual tag team. I see them more as a comedy bit. And I for just wanted Truth reason, to get his moment. That's it. He got his yeah, moment, and that's what I wanted. There you go. It's, it's a one-and-done thing. And now I want to get more into a serious dynamic because here's the thing, like we have the women's tag team championships, right? And it's not really going too well on that end. And so I don't want the men's tag team championships to be the exact same thing. I want there to be a competitive team, competitive division um, where you're going out there and you're having banger matches. And so that's personally why I want to see DIY win the titles or like I want I know I want the Creed Brothers to win I've been wanting the Creed Brothers to win I know it's not their time yet it will come but I do think that going the direction of having DIY winning and giving some more uh, just making the, the, the division feel a little bit more serious is the way to go we have Cody Rhodes coming out and cutting a promo with Jay Uso DeLeo says I don't like how Cody holds the title he he holds it like a report he's bringing to a meeting and it stresses me. What? Out. I've never noticed uh, that. How does he hold it? Uh, like that. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> what? So, I have to go back and see that. <laughs> Cody basically was like, yeah, you know what? I am the champion of the SmackDown brand, but I ain't going anywhere. I respect that. I, I'm glad that he's doing that. But uh, Jay Uso was brought in. And he defeated Finn Balor. Jay Stone says, I think Solo's run may have peaked. Uh, I like Yeet uh, Jay. I like Yeet Jay for the vibes, but Bloodline Jay was more dynamic and all-around performer. I agree. Uh, and this match was fine, but I feel like the Yeet thing has made him a little one-dimensional, and they rely on that an awful lot. And considering how multi-dimensional the bloodline is getting over on SmackDown, I'm like, okay, it's good to have that to you charge up a crowd and, and all that good stuff. But I, I do want to see a multi-dimensional J, which 
maybe he's like, damn, after being multidimensional for years, I don't want to be multidimensional. I just want to yell yeet and hit people with my ass and Samoan drops and stuff like that. Like maybe that's, that's so, but was uh Jay Uso doing anything for you tonight? You know, for me, it's, I think the problem with what's happened with Jay Uso is that like, I, I love the, the, the yeet character and just like, he just feels really cool. All of that to me has been a hit. I think the problem is that they he hasn't had a big moment on the show. There's been nothing to sort of justify this singles run. And I know he had the tag team titles with Cody, but that was so brief. Like you can almost kind of forget it, that it even happened. And I think like purse, I don't know. I just think that, that he should have had more wins, had bigger matches. And I know you're saying, well, technically he did have a really big match with his brother, but then that wasn't a hit either. It wasn't, so it wasn't good. You know, uh, uh, he does work. He does work better, I think, in a tag team. But when you do think about like the work that he had been doing with Roman, for example, like when this whole thing first started, that feels like centuries ago. All of that was really great. And we got to see a side of Jay that we didn't I didn't even know was there. Um, I don't mind what they're doing now. It's just a matter of I think the matches need to be a little bit better. So as Jay wins he fights off judgment day and leaves the venue and as he walks out of the venue Sami Zayn is standing out there that was freaking Dro- cool that whole shot was, was very cool it was one of the coolest things i've ever seen drodesy said holy crap the shot of jay to sammy was awesome yeah it was and b sweet says can you find out the fans by the concessions new ahead of sammy jay were coming through that was so cool uh, i don't think so based on what I heard. Go ahead. So basically, so this happened to me the other day because I um, went to, when I was at SmackDown, I was walking. And I forgot. I was like just walking in the concessions. And then I saw like they were setting up an angle for like Randy Orton and Austin Theory and everything. So like you can see depending on how long they've been there. So you can kind of get ready for it. But like for this one, for example, I don't think you could. It's just one of those things where it happens. Because how many times don't they go out into the concessions? And, like, you never know as a fan that they're actually coming out there unless you start to see, like, the security get people, like, on the side. Once you see that people are starting to move people, they'll kind of tell you to kind of get out of the way. And then you kind of have, like, a rough idea. But it's just, like, being at the right place at the right time. Denise, you and I have been reviewing this show together for almost five years. And we reviewed it during one of the worst periods ever. There used to be people who sincerely defended the garbage that was on that show. And listen, it's subjective and all that. But beyond that, I can't tell you how long I complained about cuts, zooms, shakes, the same old production, how ugly just the the show looked bad we are seeing some of the most breathtaking and fresh production ever. We saw the camera go to these two guys, characters that the WWE audience adores. And they're sort of connecting with each other and adding gravity to this very important moment for Sami Zayn. And we're seeing Jay Uso, who is all ye, 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 blah, 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 go and be very serious with this other serious character because he also understands the gravity of this situation. So so it adds it adds some levity there as well. And it then adds we life fought- to the show. That's what it does. It yes. adds life. It adds life to the show. It adds more to the show. As Mr. Acosta says, Kevin Dunn is a war criminal. Kevin Dunn was so past his expiration. This guy outright for all. All the people that said, yeah, he's a genius and all these. No, this guy stopped being needed a long time ago, hand in hand with Vince McMahon and and completely separate of the horrible things that Vince McMahon is, is alleged of doing It, it. I'm so glad that at least now we have these things, but it is a little disheartening and a little frustrating to think. Well, what what about when John Moxley was in WWE instead of like all the bullshit they had him doing, you know, the like needle thing, the needle thing. And like all these great performers that were 
just cast aside and like, oh, they weren't done justice by especially those two guys. Those two guys. A guy who had well expired creatively and a guy who had well expired from a production standpoint. Because we have seen so many things that me and you have went, wow, look at this shit over the last four months. And I can't think of very many that we we had done that with for four and a half years. Sorry to go no. off on a rant. but No, but God. it's one of those things I remember like people always saying, just, just people in general being like, oh, you know, Kevin Dunn, he's there because he's like the one that knows how to shoot wrestling. He knows how to shoot wrestling, right? A lot of people would say that. That was like the defense of that. And I just remember thinking like, why are we acting like there's no other people that are out there in this world studying television, studying film? And it was like something that I couldn't buy. And I'm like, I get that it's pro wrestling, but there are people every single day learning and studying this craft. And I feel like there are other people that can do this job if given the opportunity, right? And here's the thing. Like, I knew that Kevin Dunn was – not good given all of the cuts that we were seeing, right? That was the big thing. But I didn't realize how much we needed a new set of eyes, a new a new perspective on the show because they are showing all of these different shots and cameras and angles and things that I didn't even think were possible or I just couldn't like picture them in my head. And you want to know why? Because I got stuck in watching the same formula over and over and over again. That's like all I knew was the formula that we were seeing being presented for years. And now we're getting all of these cool camera shots. And it's like added so much. Like the characters just feel like more real in this different kind of way. But like even for example, today they had a new one where they had Jackie Redman interview Chad Gable before the show started. And I thought, huh, that's a great idea. Like every time I see these new things being implemented, I'm like, why didn't we see this before? And so I actually didn't realize how how tired the formula to how Raw and SmackDown were being presented until recently that I've started to see all of these new things be presented on the show. Yeah, and one of those things was one of the greatest entrances I've ever seen in wrestling. And it was just very, very simple. It was just very basic. It was Sami Zayn coming up, fired up to his theme through the concourse, through the crowd. It was powerful. It was emotional. It was incredible. It was I want to so see good. him do it every week like that. And I know this one was special because of the city and everything. Yeah. I get it. But I want to see it every week, man. It's Sami Zayn. He's like the kind of person that it would be cool to see that kind of an entrance. I don't think it works every week, but still. I know. Like, it's, it was just so good. It was so perfect. And, I, man, I'm just, I'm just glad this shit doesn't suck anymore. Cadillac Carson says, I'll never forget Dunn for missing Edge's spear. And looking at Roman's forehead for a long time. Yeah, during the AJ thing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He, it was horrible. Mr. Acosta says that was a mania entrance on a random Raw. Love it. Meet Norma says, the one shot of the Yeet Man leaving, running into Sammy, and then Sammy's entrance is what I hear the kids call dope or fire. Your thoughts? It was special is what I thought it was. Cog CG says, ET has never been in a Jordan commercial. Marvin the Martian has. Just saying, Denise, SRS has a point. No, it's uh, E.T. E.T. has, like, he's part of all of Universal Studios, bro. They're selling all of his merchandise there. Come on now. Such a heartfelt, beautiful movie. We've got uh, people talking about their, their favorite championships as well. John Shelby says, Attitude Era WWE Championship is my favorite. New World Tag Titles are kind of a nod to it. I don't know if they're a nod to that, are they? But I listen, I... Attitude Era title that the Globed Eagle definitely holds a place in many people's heart. Will says, I think what they were trying to do with Jay when Jackie asked him about what happened to Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, I, they want to make you go, okay, what the hell is, is he doing? How does he feel about this? Joel Wood says, Priest didn't look happy when Judgment Day attacked Jay. I feel Priest versus Balor is coming with Priest as a face. I am very interested in how things devolve or lack thereof with uh, with Judgment Day without. I say Rhea Ripley. they break up. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, what's what's keeping uh, 
what is keeping Dom there? You know what I mean? Like break up. He needs to go with Liv Morgan. <laughs> that's oh it. That's God, the that story so that I'm good. set on now. <laughs> that would be so that's good. all I want now. It would be so damn good. Uh, we got what else is there? Hold on one second. Get your super chats, get your humper chats in. JM Melagrito says, I'll never forgive Dunn for the AJ Styles debut botch. It was bad. It was bad. Will says, just imagine if we had this production when Roman, Seth, and Mox were together. No kidding. No kidding. Yeah. The cool like entrance, how it would look. Yeah, for sure. Well, we do have it uh, with this match, and this was a phenomenal match. This was great. Uh, the, the action was incredible. We knew it would be incredible. But the story of the match is what happened afterwards when Sami Zayn won. We got it. We got the Chad Gable heel turn. He did an ankle lock over the rope, all that stuff, beat him down right in front of uh in front of his wife. Practically on top of his wife, bro. He was like hugging her when he came from behind and hit freaking Sam. He almost took it the wife out too. He almost did. Uh Denise, this is long overdue. I'm very, very excited about what we are seeing here. My heart is broken. I'm sorry. Really? Yes. I didn't want this. I did not want this. I didn't want Chad Gable to turn on Sammy. I knew it was coming. I didn't want it. I wanted Why? to see a friendship. Because <laughs> we need to really? have nice things every now and then, Sean. Okay? I wasn't ready for this. I knew it was coming. Wasn't ready for it. And when it happened, I almost like didn't even react. I was like, nope, I'm not seeing this. This is not what I'm seeing. <laughs> like, I refused to believe it. I was in denial. Um, but I did. I liked this match. I didn't think it was as good as the one that they had when they did the gauntlet. I think that one was way better, but this one was fine. I like when Sammy went for the sharpshooter, but his leg gave out. I thought that was a cool little dramatic portion of it all. But yeah, I ref I I'm in denial at this moment. I am so glad this finally happened. Samuel Jacobs says the Gable heel term was done really well when they showed Sammy's wife to let me know it was happening. Thoughts? I'm over the moon about it. I am so glad that it's finally happened. I think that he needed this. I felt like it was coming after the second loss to Gunther because it's like, how do you, how do you recover from that? Not only losing to someone who was better than you, but then watching somebody else with your watching, guidance, with your guidance, watching somebody else win and then beat you as well. Ooh, that's tough. And that's ultimately what it comes down to. Gable is a sore loser. It's that that is ego. the thing. And Cog says, Perk Gable, baby, give him the title. Jock, no, or, or are you a Joel sore loser if you lose a bunch of times, though? Because at some point, it's just... Because I feel like you're a sore loser if you lose once and you can't handle it. If you lose all the time at that point, like, poor guy, you know? Joel Woods says, Denise, I like what you're cooking. Liv said she was going to take everything from Rhea. Everything includes Dom. You're right. Let's go. Tony says, what about how Sting's debut played out? Done blue. Yes, he was very terrible. Very terrible. You guys aren't terrible, though. FightfulSelect.com. I'm over there talking wrestling all week on Discord. I'm uh, going to be using Twitter a lot less. But go over there. Subscribe. We got an interview with Natalia that is up here on YouTube.com slash Fightful. We got a whole bunch of them that are going up, actually. And early access for Tier 2 members of Select. Gail Kim reviewing The Devil Wears Prada on FightfulSelect.com with Gisberto and Rob Wilkins. Bro, I cut my hair like Anne Hathaway after that movie. That movie changed my life. <laughs> Tracy Tran said, who knew faking names is destiny for Lee Fitting? Ended up working out well for him. For those who know, they know. Will says, all we need to do and need is Chad to take some of that stuff Kurt Angle was taking in TNA. I hope not. I hope not. Denise, tell the people where they can find you. YouTube.com slash Denise Salcedo. Ch Ch I fucked up my own last name. <laughs> I was like, that's not my last name. Okay. YouTube.com slash Denise Salcedo. Wow. Um, that video with Sean and I, where we pick our favorite match from every single WrestleMania is up right now. It's fun. Check it out. It Give fun. it some love. I have an unboxing video up videos from WrestleMania weekend, and I will be a dynasty. So more videos coming there. There's lots going up. Uh, please check out the channel. It's my baby. 
She does incredible work over there, guys. Please check it out. Check us out here on Fightful nonstop. Uh, how about this tomorrow morning? Beyond the Bell with Andrew Zarian and Rich. Every Tuesday morning last week, uh, they broke some news that Forbidden Door was not going to be at Arthur Ashe. And we had some people saying, mm, it's not true. Well, guess what? <laughs> guess what, guys? It was true. Beyond the Bell, Tuesday morning. Check it out. Until next time, guys, we're out.